Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Um, I think everyone that follows me here knows I'm a big fan of test-driven development and tests in general. And um, I want to talk a little bit about how I use, I leverage test-driven development and past and PHP unit to kind of transport my, my thoughts in real life on how I think things should work into tests that help me implement a future. So uh, I think a really good example is something that I've done yesterday. Um, I'm building this app, which is meant to track my crypto wallet or anyone's crypto wallet. And uh, I, I've written it in such a way that it can show an account's balance, uh, their profit, how much they've invested. So maybe you bought a, a token at $100, you bought 10 of them. So you spent a thousand bucks. And now the token's worth um, $200. So you've invested a thousand, you've made a thousand of profit and you have a $2,000 balance. And it works well, I have tasks there. They're all working well. But um, I was trying to implement a way for, for it to calculate profits made when you sell your stuff. So let's say you bought um, 15 tokens at $100. I'm sorry, 100 tokens at $100. So $10,000. And then when the token reached 200, you sold 50 of them. So you sold it for uh, $10,000, but you've made it a $5,000. So every time you want to calculate the profit, you will have to take the profit that's already been made. So those realized gains and sum it with the unrealized gains. And that was a little bit more complicated than I expected. So I was talking to my friend Dan, uh, explaining to him how things, how I think, how I thought things should work on, on Tax, on Telegram. And it just helped me think about not how I was going to implement this, but which results it should give. So I put a scenario, talked to him, asked if it made sense. And then the thoughts that I had in my head that went into Telegram, but it could be a piece of paper or just your thoughts, I then moved them into past into Laravel, into past. And uh, I think it's going to be pretty interesting to show you guys, not the coding skills to implement a feature, but uh, the thought process necessary to actually write those tests. And yeah, yeah, let, 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 let's move into the code and I'm going to show you. Okay, so this is my conversation with them on Telegram. Uh, it's in Portuguese, but uh, let's focus on this. So here I was explaining a scenario. I would buy 100 Ethereum at $100. Then I would sell 50 Ethereum at $200. So my balance would be 50 Ethereum at $100 average price. And my realized gains would be 200 minus 100 because that's my average price times 50, the amount I sold right here. And my unrealized gains would be 500, which is Ethereum's current price in this situation. I forgot to mention, but uh, I, I did send this to him on the previous message. And um, minus 100, because it's my average price, times 50, because that's my current balance. I have 50 Ethereum, and that's 20,000. So my total gains, my total profit would be uh, realized gains plus unrealized gains, that is $25,000. And this, this can vary. So the unrealized gains can change according to the token's price. But the realized gain is gonna change. It doesn't matter if Ethereum goes up or down because I've sold it already. I've realized the profit. And the, the app calculation would be um, the average price is only going to include positive transactions. So it would be the total spent on positive transactions divided by the amount of positive transactions. In this case, there's only one positive transaction, which is by 100 Ethereum. And that's why the average price is 100. The reason I write this down is because um, as I'm thinking, I want to remember how, how I got into a number. Uh, wh wh where did it come from? And then here's how I would calculate the current position, basically just explaining how I would fetch, how I would include those realized gains uh, and sum them with the unrealized gains. So if we go into the app and I go into account service test, this was the test that I had already written, so you can see that it only has positive transactions, um, and we have some calculations, and those need to pass. Those were already passing, and it needs to still pass. 
But what I wanted to do was this test. It builds a crypto position with sell transactions. That's what was hard to build. Um, let's take a look at it. So I'm creating an account. I'm creating an asset, which is Ethereum. That's just the name of it. It doesn't really matter. And I'm saying the current price is 500. Now I'm doing exactly what I say on this message. I first buy 100 Ethereum at $100 and I then sell 50 Ethereum at $200. And then I just pasted what was on the message. So I've already done the transactions and now I just got to make assertions. If we look at the SAS, I already have this position object here. It already works, but I needed to be sure it would work for this type of transaction. So let's take a look at this block of code. And I've included some comments to explain what it is. So I'm making those assertions on the first position, which is the only one. I only have a position on Ethereum and this test case. If you're not familiar with this syntax, this is uh, past the amazing expectation API. And I'm making a bunch of assertions. So the first one is the quantity, which is the balance is 50. And it is because I sold 50, I had 100 previously. So it's now 50. I'm making sure my average price is 100, which it is. I bought uh, 100 tokens for um, $10,000. So my average price is $100 per token. And here's where things start to get tricky. So total position is 2,500. I'm sorry, 25,000. And this was failing before because the way I was calculating the total position was just summing up all transactions. But when you sum up all transactions and you have a negative one, it's actually going to decrease. And then we have those two additional methods, unrealized profit, which didn't exist, and realized profit, which now exists. So this is how much I have and that I haven't sold. So this is a variable. This can change according to the token's price. And this is the realized profit. This is in the past. It's done. It doesn't change. It's static. Unless I sell again, it's not going to change. It's not going to increase nor decrease. And then I have the total profit, which is 25,000. That's my profit. So the profit is basically the unrealized profit plus the realized profit. I have this in unrealized profit, which is 50, my position, times 500 minus 100. Uh, the reason for this is because 500 is the current price. And 100 is my average price, which is 20,000. And I have 5,000 of realized gains. And my total spend, the amount I spend on those coins, is 10,000. If I was just summing transactions, it wouldn't show this value because there's a negative transaction, which is the, the sell operation. So some things had to be changed for this to work. I'm going to show you guys um, what the code looks like. Okay, so this, those are the changes. Uh, let's take a look at them. Never mind the commit master, just this is a personal project, so I'm not taking it very seriously. Um, here's the test that I, that I added, the one we've just seen. And let's take a look at the position object. Um, let's see what's, what's changed first. So the total profit, which previously was realized, I'm sorry, total position. So all, all that I have, all that you have, Minus the total spent. That makes sense. So if you have um, 25,000 in your position and you spend 20,000 to get those tokens, it means you have 5,000 of profit. But that's going to work because we now have negative transactions. So um, you can see that the tests guided me through this. At first, those tests were failing. They were failing. Um, every, uh, except for the, the quantity, everyone else, every other assertion was failing because the average price was wrong, the total position was wrong, because of what I introduced. So um, you can see that one major change was the total spent. Now the total spent only includes positive transactions, buy operations. It doesn't include sell operations. That was a major change. And then things got easy. The realized profit is just the sell operations and the profit that was made on those operations. The unrealized profit is the profit per unit. And the profit per unit is nothing more than the asset's current price minus the average price times the quantity they have on their wallet, which is every coin, every token that was bought, bought minus every token that was sold, right? 
and things really got easy. Now, there were, I needed to make some changes to the schema. Uh, for instance, since the profit is something that's immutable, it doesn't change once you sell something, there is a profit and that's it. You cannot, you cannot increase or decrease according to the token's price. I needed to make some changes uh, on the transaction column. Uh, I haven't used all of those. I did make, I did refactor this a little bit after it. But basically, I started sorting this profit column. And actually, I removed it and only kept the average price down because that allows me uh, to calculate how much of profit each transaction made. Um, you can see we have this profit method and the amount column is source the, for how much it was sold. Um, so for instance, I sold 50 Ethereum at 200. So I'm going to be 200 and average price then was going to be a hundred. So the profit per unit was, was going to be a hundred, if that makes sense. So, um, this was more of an impromptu video. Um, I wasn't really planning to, to record it. I'm not sure it really helps without really seeing all the code, but, uh, I basically had to write tasks. And then through each failing assertion, I started to rewrite some code and I managed to get to where I wanted. So the trick here is not the coding skills, but your problem solving skills. Uh, the way you can think of the problem when you are not familiar with financial operations, they've never worked on this area. I don't have a lot of experience. So I wasn't really sure what I needed to do. And the best way to figure out what to do is to build fake scenarios, build tasks. It doesn't have to be code. Uh, it could just be a message like the one I sent in. Um, what's important is that you can externalize the problem you're trying to solve and the result you're trying to get. So with this scenario in mind, I knew which each method should return. I didn't have to try. I didn't have to test. I knew that the average price should be 100. I knew the unrealized profit should be 20,000. And I knew the realized profit should be 5,000. And after you spec out the test, after you write the test, it just becomes so much easier because you don't have to guess or test what you're trying to achieve. You already know what you have to achieve. You already know the end result and you just have to build the road. So um, let me know if that makes sense to you guys. And uh, Let's see if this format of video works. Um, I'll see if I can share the code somehow here with you so you can check what was changed and how I changed it. And yeah, let me know what you think and if this video was of any help. Thanks.